We're gonna be using the new magnetic mask in this video, going over some color theory and learning some tricks that'll get your shots looking great. This video is the second video of five in a series where I color grade your clips on the channel. This particular shot is from a subscriber named Farhan, whose channel is called Drone Fate. This used to be log footage, but since I realized that not everyone grades log footage, I converted it to Rec. 709 for this example. First things first, make sure you have your video scopes up by pressing Command 7, and let's get our shot looking alive again by adding our contrast by lowering the brightness of our shadows closer to zero IRE, and raising the brightness of our highlights so they're closer to 100 IRE. Going past these points will erase detail in your shot, and usually that's not something we want. You'll sometimes see crushed blacks in movies to help guide viewers' eyes more into parts of the frame that they want you to see or to add extra suspense and drama, but that's usually a very stylized choice and we don't really want that for this shot. Then we'll adjust our mid-tones exposure slider to add in the contrast that we want. And let's pump in some saturation into our entire image by using the global saturation slider so our colors have more of a punch to them. We can rename this layer so we stay organized Let's add a color curves layer to start creating our look. Let's adjust the hue of our first curve to something warmer, more towards orange. After all, we want this to be a warmer beach look, and right now it is way too cool. With color grading, you have surprising control over how your viewer feels when they watch your video. And the current look that we have going on does not make me want to hang out at this beach. It gives me sad and lonely vibes, and we don't want that in this instance. So let's head to the part of our color curve where our highlights sit and push orange into the highlights and midtones of our shot by pushing up on our curve. Notice how this really warms up the brighter areas of our shot and we can verify this by looking at our handy vector scope. Our shot was swinging towards the cooler hues and with that one adjustment, we've now shifted our colors more to where we would like them to sit. And let's just make our shadows stay at the level they started at so they're not too warmed up. Let's pull up our cyan curve so we can start to create even more of a complementary color scheme look. That's a look that uses colors that oppose each other on the color wheel. Whether it's a strong complementary color scheme like Mad Max or more of a subtle one like this scene in The Dark Knight, a complementary color scheme is one way to add a lot of color depth and color contrast to your shot and make it appear more 3D, for lack of a better term. For example, look at this yellow text in the blue square and the yellow text in the orange square. Because yellow is so similar to this orange color, the text doesn't pop and stand out. But because the color blue is fairly opposite to the color yellow on the color wheel, this text appears stronger and easier to read. It's why if you're subscribed to my channel, you'll notice that my thumbnails almost always have opposing colors to add color contrast. The same exact thing applies for color grading if you're wanting to create that complementary color look. So we're basically gonna create the opposite curve here. But since we want the shot to be pretty warm in general, we'll only add a little bit of cyan into our shadows. And let's head to where our midtones and highlights sit and subtract the cyan from these areas by pulling down. This adds its warmer, opposing color, adding even more warmth to the brighter areas of our shot. Nothing is worse than filming great looking shots and then having them look like trash in the color grading process. I spent a full year making the FCP color grading masterclass so this doesn't happen to FCP users anymore. I'm very proud of this course. It's been getting amazing reviews from students. It's been added as an exclusive color correction and grading resource on Apple's official website. And best of all, it is 65% off right now. It has over 85 lessons covering everything from the fun world of color theory to precision color correction to step-by-step -step color grading walkthroughs. And recently I added additional lessons showing how to use the new magnetic mask for color correction and color grading. If you don't have a lot of footage that you can practice with, no worries because the course offers 4K clips that you can download and follow along with. Not only that, but students get my filmic love packs for free as well as a useful Funica Pro shortcuts guide. It's a fun course I think that's geared towards brand new beginners all the way up to more advanced video editors. I spent an entire year making sure that it could help you transform the look of your videos and I am positive that it can. Once the base look has been created we can rename that layer and we can start making some secondary correction tweaks. Let's bring up our HSL curves and let's use our hue versus hue curve which adjusts the color of any color we want. And we'll use the picker to change the color of our water here. I'm actually thinking that having our water be more of a royal blue would give us a really nice looking shot. 
We can rename this layer so we stay organized. Now let's add a color curves layer and let's use our new magnetic mask to select our focus of the shot, which is this building on the end of the pier. We'll hold option to deselect the areas that we don't want included in the mask. Hit analyze. And once it's finished tracking, let's use our luma curve, which adjusts the brightness of what we've masked out to create what's called an S curve. Basically a way that we can quickly brighten the brightest areas of the mask and darken the darkest areas. This adds some extra contrast to this building, making it stand out even more. And if we click outside, we can even try pulling down the brightness of the outside of the mask ever so slightly to make the building even more of a focus. Small, but it makes a difference. Final secondary corrections here to get the shot looking even better. Let's add an HSL curves layer and let's adjust the color of our beach to be something warmer, swinging more towards orange. Let's add more saturation to this orange color by using our hue versus sat curve, which adjusts the intensity of color in whatever color you want. And we'll just push up to make the orange of this beach a little more intense. Let's even use our hue versus luma curve, which adjusts the brightness of whatever color you want. However, you really need to be careful with this curve. It can totally break apart your footage. So slight pushes here and just keep an eye out in your shot to see if any issues arise when you adjust it. And that just gives our beach a darker, richer look that I think does a great job of complementing our deep royal blue color that we chose for our ocean. If we head down to our Luma versus Sat curve, which lets you adjust the intensity of color in different brightness values in our shot, we can desaturate the very darkest parts of our image to make them a bit more natural looking, specifically since we pushed color into our shot. But let's just make this a slight adjustment here by not pulling down to desaturate a lot. And lastly, let's use the sat versus sat curve to lower the intensity of color in the most saturated areas and raise the intensity of color in the least saturated areas ever so slightly. Final adjustment here, let's add a little cherry on top by adding a color wheels layer and using our shape mask to help guide our viewers eyes more into our subject here, which is this building. If we pull out the outside circle, we can feather the mask so that the adjustment that we make in our color wheels will be more gradual. Let's click outside so everything outside of this inner circle is affected. And if we lower the exposure of our midtone slightly, we can darken the midtones that are outside of our mask. And perhaps even decrease the saturation slightly as well, since adjusting the brightness of colors can affect how saturated they look. Now we have this subtle vignette that helps guide our attention more to our subject. Congratulations to Drone Fate for the great clip. And if you wanna level up the look of your videos, check out the FCP Color Grading Masterclass by clicking on the link in the description and comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.